As a child growing up in New York during the Depression, she endured names like dumb, stupid, and retarded. In school, she was called inattentive and a slow learner, and held the record for the most number of visits to the principal's office. Little Patricia Buckley discovered at a very early age that she was somehow different from the rest of her siblings and classmates. What set us apart、um, was that I was very dyslexic and I did not read. And if you don't read, you don't write. And if you don't write, you don't, you're not successful in school. School was obviously a bit of a problem for Pat. Her essays and writing assignments drew laughter and jokes. Kids would taunt and ridicule her. To escape the criticism, she would let her imagination transport her elsewhere. I would walk home from school with this bad report card, and I'd walk through the woods, and I'd say, "Hey Tarzan, come and get me! I want to get out of this life. I want to get into that life where no one criticizes you, and you can be natural and be in nature. Because I love nature, and I love doing、uh, physical things." But it wasn't long before Pat found her true natural ability, one that would bring her praise, not ridicule. Her inability to read and her rather vivid imagination soon translated into her ability to draw and draw well. Her biggest fan and supporter was her grandfather, a retired railroad engineer who taught himself how to read and write. To Patrick, as he would call her, he was a mentor who had great faith in her and, unlike anyone else, listened to her every word. He encouraged her and made her feel that if she really wanted to do something and tried her best, she would succeed. And so she did. Her art assumed a psychological importance in her life. And while she couldn't communicate through words, she could communicate through art. There wasn't a day when she didn't draw or paint. It was her passion. It wasn't long before Patrick was headed to college to a very prestigious art school on Staten Island. I discovered that the Cooper Union was available, so I wasn't just going to be a dumb kid, a stupid, dumb, and retarded kid. I was going to be able to challenge myself and get into this very special college, and it was for the advancement of science and art. And if you really had a desire to learn and you were intelligent, you could get into the school because the entrance test was an intelligence test. Again, the stupid, dumb, and retarded kid was on the first draw to get in there, where some of my friends who were straight A's didn't make it. College was exactly what Pat needed. She now had the skills and background necessary to begin her journey as an artist. Several jobs soon followed, along with a marriage and five children. Her sixth child would be born in Waynesboro, Virginia, where the Moss family would eventually settle. It was in Virginia where Pat Moss would come to meet, know, and respect the Amish and Mennonites, who also called Virginia home. Their simplicity, along with traditions and lifestyles, would become a major influence in Pat's artwork. In my work,、um, I appreciate ethics, and so I think I try to.、Uh, I think it naturally. I don't even try. I think it naturally comes into what I do. And the Amish and the Mennonites naturally came into that picture, and because of their stark appearance, I like the lowest common denominator. I like things done simply, and they dress simply, and they are simple, and they are very good people. That simplicity would become her trademark. Thousands of paintings, and more than half a century later, P. Buckley Moss, as she is better known, is still drawing, painting, and etching for her thousands of fans all over the world. P. Buckley Moss conventions, exhibitions, and social gatherings draw hundreds, if not thousands, of people annually. Pat, of course, tries to give of herself, if only a few moments, to each and every one. But she is also giving of herself to those who really need her, as she tries to give children and teenagers with learning disabilities the one thing that she didn't have much of when she was their age: hope. If you can read, I think it's hard for you to understand how it is for people who can't read. For Pat and second husband and manager Malcolm Henderson, it has become an obsession to help children, all children in need, whether they are starving or sick, but particularly if they are learning disabled. A mentor plays a very important part in a child's life. A child with a learning difference. You have a child who is bright and intelligent, and perhaps can't read or perhaps can't understand、um, mathematics or something. But that child, if that child is nurtured, that child can become something very special. For Pat, it is giving to others what her grandfather gave to her: encouragement and the feeling that nothing was impossible. You realize that、um, that they didn't have a grandfather like yours, someone who would put their arm around you and say, "Hey, Patrick, you're a good person, and you are you're okay. Even though you can't do this and this, you can do this." 
Today, the P. Buckley Moss Society exists not only to provide fellowship between collectors, but to identify local charities that could benefit from Pat's talent and works. So, to those who ever doubted little Patricia Buckley, and to the teachers who would shake their heads in frustration and wonder, what will become of Pat? My life is doing what I can do when I can do it, and uh, as much as I can possibly do, because I know tomorrow I won't be able to do that anymore.